Hello gems, Leah from Red Emerald Yoga. Today I am doing a new moon in Aries tarot spread. This is going to be a seven card spread to help you connect with your confidence, to find your courage, and to allow you to set bold intentions for this next moon phase. Hello, pile one, welcome to your reading. Before we begin, I invite you to close your eyes, elongate your spine, and bring your awareness to your breath. I invite you to set an intention for your reading, an intention to be open, receptive, and to allow yourself to be fully present. Take one more deep inhale here. Exhale and breathe your eyes open. Okay, welcome to your reading. Okay, so this first card, this is how can I shape my life? to align with my true desires. Eight of Wands. This is a card of action, of moving forward. I think that this card is putting your dreams, your desires, your hopes into action. I think this is all about sitting down and making a plan and then acting on it, taking that first step, taking that leap of faith, and moving forward. This next card, where do I need to assert myself to feel emotionally secure? Strength. I feel like you need to harness your inner strength. I think that you need to come to terms with the fact that you are stronger than what you see in the mirror. You are more powerful than you appear. I think that this card is calling on you to embrace this, this Leo energy, the strength of the lion. And it's not, um, it's not approaching difficult situations, which is just like attacking like a lion. It's knowing that you are that strong, but you still have the ability to have compassion, to be gentle. Like the old saying goes, you catch more flies with honey than you do with vinegar. So that's using your honey to get your way. And, that, and that's not, not in a manipulative way. It's just knowing that you don't need to, um, you don't need to look or sound scary in order to be powerful. What new experiences will heighten my self-confidence? Queen of Swords reversed. So normally the Queen of Swords, she's very clear-headed. She's very level-headed. She's an excellent strategizer. Um, but when she's reversed, she can lack compassion. She can lack empathy. Um, she can become shut down and not communicate very well. The Queen of Swords normally does not let her emotions get involved in this situation. And because your card is reversed, um, I'm thinking you may fall into um, being really snappy, overly agitated, lacking pa uh, compassion or patience when you're dealing with other people, with other situations. So I'm thinking that um, this, this, these emotions that are trapped here in the bars, that you need to let those out. You need to become uh, more in tune with your emotions and allow a little bit of compassion, a little bit of empathy into the situation, thinking about how other people feel when you're dealing with them. Thinking about how would you feel if someone spoke to you in that way? This next card, this is what courageous action do I need to take to achieve my goals? Seven of Pentacles. So here he has like, like he's working on his garden, right? And these are growing out of the roots. So I feel like being patient, working on a project, like, um, like with this card, the eight of wands, figuring out an actionable plan and then taking action on it and then nurturing it, not expecting results to happen overnight. Um, I think it takes a lot of courage to, to embark on, on something, something big, knowing that you're not going to have immediate results, putting in so much work, putting in your effort, your, you know, your dedication, and then not knowing if you're going to succeed or fail. I think that takes tremendous amount of courage. It takes so much inner strength. 
And I think that's what this card is calling on you to do. To take those first steps and then really work at making it happen. How can I handle conflict effectively? Six of Pentacles, but in reverse. So normally the Six of Pentacles is all about like an even exchange of energy. Um, when it's upright, I tend to feel like you are the one giving, doing more of, um, more of like a giving nature, right? But when it's in reverse, I feel like you're the one who's needing help, but it's not charity. There is some sort of exchange happening. And I feel like when, when you're in difficult situations, um, when there's a conflict, you may need to ask for help. Maybe you need to ask for forgiveness. Maybe you need to ask for, um, for help in overcoming this obstacle, but it's not just going to be someone's helping you out, bailing you out. Someone's giving you, um, you know, money to get you out of this situation or somebody's giving you this, what are those things called? Those floaty things, like a, like a life preserver, you know, in the ocean. Um, they're not, they're not just bailing you out and saving you. You are doing something in exchange for this. This could also be thinking about the consequences of your actions, like what you give out, you're going to receive. I think this can also be talking about that too. Thinking about, thinking about what kind of, what kind of return are you going to get on these actions? What is my highest intention for my personal power? Ace of Pentacles reversed. I feel like this is not starting a new project. I feel like this is, this is, this is taking action and working on an existing project. This is not the time to, um, create a new project. This is, I think this, these cards are saying that you need to finish what you have already started, what you have already, um, somewhat planned out or put wheels in motion, so to speak. Um, I feel like, yeah, working on working on your existing project, working on whatever it is, whatever skill it is that you're learning, um, continuing down that path, not taking on any more of a burden than you already have. You need to sort out what you have. What would I do if I knew I would succeed? Ace of Wands reversed. With this card, I feel like you are doubting yourself. You are doubting your ability to succeed in the projects that you already have going on. And I feel like, um, I feel like this card is suggesting that you're kind of at a place where you feel a little bit burned out. Um, you're feeling like this disconnect, like this is like the third eye, right? So like you're feeling a disconnect, like you, you don't see things clearly. You don't see a way forward. And what would you do if you knew you would succeed? Um, is I feel like you would be inspired. You would, you would have passion. You would have this spark. This, and this is like the first card in the suit of wands. So it's, it's the card of like, like a, like a seed and an infinite potential for possibility. And I feel like you would have that creative spirit, that creative drive. Um, but I feel like you're just, you're just tired. You're a little bit jaded and you're just like, uh, whatever I, I could do this, but it's, it's, it's so hard. There's so much work or I just don't feel like doing this now. And I feel like if you knew you, if you knew you would succeed, um, if you knew you put in all this hard work and it would work out, then I feel like, yeah, this card would be righted. So pile one, turquoise group, that is your reading. I hope you enjoyed it. And please let me know in the comments below if you felt like any of these cards were speaking directly to you. Let me know if you didn't like any of your cards. Um, whatever insight you have into your reading, I would love to hear back. If you enjoyed this video, please like and subscribe. Thank you. Bye. Hello, Pile 2. If you have chosen the Halolite Stone, this reading is for you.
Before we begin, I invite you to come to a comfortable seated position, sitting up nice and tall, elongating your spine, and bring your awareness to your breath. Notice what it's doing and how you feel. I invite you to close your eyes and set an intention for your reading, an intention to be open, to be receptive, and to allow yourself to be fully present. Take one more deep inhale here. Exhale and breathe your eyes open. Okay, welcome to your reading. This first card is, how can I shape my life to align with my true desires? Page of Swords. I love this card. To me, this card is all about trusting yourself. Um, she's just looking down at the book. And to me, that, that symbolizes like starting a new chapter in your life. Like she's learning something, you got these light bulbs, like your light bulb, aha movement. And she's just trusting. She's just walking across the sword. Um, swords being the suit of, of in, sword being, the swords being the intellectual suit. So it's all about learning new, new ideas, new skills, and just like starting a new chapter in your life, starting over, leaving the past in the past and just just really coming into who who you're who you want to be. This next card is where do I need to assert myself to feel emotionally secure? Eight of Wands. Now this card came up in the last reading, Eight of Wands, and it came up in pile one. And this is all about taking action and moving forward. Um, to me, it's about not being afraid of taking that first step. I think that this. This card is about making a plan, figuring out what needs to be done, and then taking that first step. Because oftentimes, the very first step is the hardest. It's the most terrifying. It's it's what stops people from achieving their goals. And I feel like in order to make yourself feel emotionally secure, it's going to be by figuring it out, like really laying out a plan and then taking these actionable steps. So that way you just keep moving forward. You keep making progress. What new experiences will heighten my self-confidence? Four of Pentacles. I feel like this is working on your foundation. This is laying the groundwork. And I really feel like this is tying in with the Eight of Wands um, and the Page of Swords. I feel like she's learning and she's she has to learn and do like background information on whatever it is that she, this journey that she wants to embark on. The four, it reminds me of a table or chair with four legs. It's, it's very secure. It's much more secure than a table or chair with three legs would be. And here she is clutching her coin purse. I feel like this is a time for not spending money on lavish things, on excess things that are not needed. I feel like she's really clutching down and she's living within her means. And because she's living within her means, she doesn't have to scrape by. So she's she looks very comfortable. This can also be a time of maybe starting a new bank account. This could be a time of really coming into your own financially. This could be a time maybe it's um you know, maybe it's consolidating debt. Maybe it's getting a new credit card and, you know, starting to build your credit. Maybe it saving up for something that you've really wanted for a long time, but didn't didn't think that it was possible, and actually setting your money aside and reaching that goal. I think that that's, you know, it's going to be different for different people because this is a collective reading, but that's what I'm getting out of that card. What courageous action do I need to take to achieve my goals? Judgment. I feel like this card, she's surrendering. She's got her arms up and she's lifting them. And then we just have like her spirit being lightened and coming up. I feel like this card is maybe um, maybe she has atoned for things that she has done wrong in the past. Maybe she has offered somebody forgiveness. Maybe she has apologized for hurting somebody or for doing something that she feels badly about. But whatever it is, it's she's letting something go. She's getting something off her chest and she's 
surrendering. This could also be letting go of worry, of letting go of doubt. Maybe she's been too hard on herself. Maybe she's Maybe she has judged herself too harshly and she's letting go of that fear of that self-doubt. And when she does that, her spirit is able to lighten up and she's able to achieve her goals. How can I handle conflict effectively? Ten of Pentacles. To me, this reminds me of a family. I feel like... These pentacles, pentacles represent real world issues. And in this, in this spread, um, this card is reminding me that everybody has their own issues. That everybody has their own things that they carry around with them, that they deal with. And that affects people differently. People cope in different ways. And I feel like how you can handle conflict effectively is by not judging people so so harshly by allowing people to be who they are by just accepting people for who they are that people don't have to fit in to your um your definition of who they should be and just just accepting them just loving them um, that does not mean that you're letting people walk all over you that you're a doormat or that your opinion or your beliefs don't matter that is absolutely not what i'm saying but what I'm what I am saying is that that people don't have to fit into your box. Now, if those people don't mesh, they don't vibe with you, that's totally fine. And you don't have to let those people over for dinner. You don't have to have them over for tea, but not letting their differences like interfere with your real world stuff. Like that, that's that what I guess what I'm trying to say is that the, if they're not in your life, in the real world, that it doesn't really matter. Don't, don't worry about what other people are doing so much. This next card is, what is my highest intention for my personal power? Nine of Cups. I feel like this card is celebrating your wins. Um, acknowledging your blessings that you have so many blessings you have so many things to be grateful for and i feel like when you are able when you are able to acknowledge and to offer gratitude for all of the things that are working out in your life for all of the lessons that you've learned um even if that means like oh you know but but what about this you know leah th these people you know um these people hurt me and you know, we're not even, we're not friends anymore. Or this relationship didn't work out. Well, you know, maybe, maybe that was for the best. How did that person really make you feel? Sometimes we look at things and we try to hold on to them and we try to cling to these people and these situations that are not serving our greatest good. And we realize in hindsight, when the smoke and fog has cleared that, wow, you know, my life actually improved when this situation was, um, forcefully removed from me because I wouldn't, I wouldn't remove myself from this situation or because, you know, this person left my life that I really try to keep a connection with. My life has improved in this way. Um, so even when things look like, oh, wow, you know, it, it's actually, this is a bad thing that happened to me. Sometimes you can find the silver lining in that. So this card is all about acknowledging the blessings that you have. What would I do if I knew I would succeed? The sun. <laughs> okay. I feel like if you knew you would succeed, you would just be overcome with joy. You would be so happy. Um, I'm going back over my spread. I'm trying to find which card means what. So let me see. Okay. One, two, three, four. Okay, so this card here is the judgment card. What courageous action do I need to achieve my goals? I feel like taking this action is going to get you here. How can I shape my life to align with my true desires? 
by learning, by educating yourself, by taking this, you know, these first few steps into this new chapter of your life, by asserting yourself, making a plan. That way, emotionally, you're not on this roller coaster. You have the confidence, the backing, knowing like, okay, I made this plan. I'm going to move forward. I'm going to save. I'm not going to over indulge in things that I don't need. I'm going to forgive. I'm going to let go. I'm going to allow myself to be free. I'm going to let my spirit just take flight. You know, I'm going to let people be. I'm going to just accept people for who they are. I'm going to draw a line in the sand like, okay, these people, you know, don't mesh in my inner circle. I'm not going to let them in, but I'm not going to let them. I'm not going to let them rule my life. And then just being so grateful for what you have, that's going to bring you to the sun. And so pile two, I hope you enjoyed your reading. Let me know in the comments what you thought about your cards. If there were any cards that you liked, any cards that you didn't like. If you felt like anything was speaking to you directly, I would love to hear about that. If you enjoyed your reading, please like and subscribe. And thank you for watching. Hello, pile three. If you have chosen Malachite Stone, this reading is for you. Please come to a comfortable seated position, sitting up nice and tall, elongating your spine, and bring your awareness to your breath. Notice what it's doing and how you feel right now in this moment. I invite you to close your eyes and set an intention for your reading, an intention to be open, to be receptive, and to allow yourself to be fully present. Take one more deep inhale here, exhale, and breathe your eyes open. Okay, welcome to your reading. This first card, this is how can I shape my life to align with my true desires? Knight of Wands reversed. Now the Knight of Wands, there's a lot of creative energy in this card. I also feel that there's a lot of sexual energy in this card. And when this card is reversed, I feel like you are not in tune with your creative, with your either your creativity or your sexuality, maybe even both. I feel like there's a lot of repressed emotions. Um, in this card, she's, she's hitting the drum and this fire is coming out of the drum. She's surrounded by flames. And I feel like, like you're marching to the beat of someone else's drum. You haven't really figured out what it is that sets your heart on fire. You, or if you have, you have not figured out a way to chase that, to make that a reality in your own life. In order to write this card, I feel like this has to do with the sacral chakra. I feel like you need to balance your sacral chakra. Um, this card can also indicate that those areas of your life are overactive too. So because it's a collective reading, some of you may be underactive. Some of you may be overactive. So you could be charging into relationships a little bit too quickly and then being left feeling empty and depleted afterwards. Or you could be the one um, that is overly imaginative and overly, overly creative, but for some reason, not really, um, it's, it's not really working out. Or maybe you're taking on too many creative projects, charging in a little bit too fast, but I do feel like this is out of balance in those areas. So in order to balance that, if it's, if it's underactive, I feel like you would need to work on building that um, area. Maybe it's like getting in touch with your creative side, singing in the shower, dancing, making something that makes you feel nice. If you're overactive, then I think that would be pulling on these reins of the horse and just kind of reining that in, having a little bit of restraint. Um, maybe you don't need those new art brushes or those new set of paints, or <laughs> if you're overly creative, Maybe you don't need um, whatever it is that your creative craft is. Maybe it's time to just show a little bit of restraint in that area if you're on the overactive side. 
um, if it's overactive relationships, overactive sexually, then maybe um, you just need to, you need to tone that down a bit. Where do I need to assert myself to feel emotionally secure? The tower. I feel like there's something in your life that is not, um, is not serving your greatest good. And you know what it is. But for whatever reason, um, you just want to keep it there. Maybe it's like, it's kind of like a security blanket or it's the way that things have been for so long and you don't want to, you don't want that to change. But this tower moment, um, this, this needs to happen in order for you to feel emotionally secure. There's something that is in your life that it's not built on a strong foundation. It's built on a shaky foundation and sooner or later it will come crashing down and it will leave you feeling very upset, devastated. Um, I call this the oh shit card. It's, it's just like, it's an unwanted experience. It's a change that you, that you usually don't want. And, um, I feel like, like this moment needs to happen, but you're resisting the, you're resisting this change. You're trying to cling on to it for whatever reason. What new experiences will heighten my self-confidence? Ace of Cups. I feel like this would be a new relationship with a person. It doesn't have to be romantic, but I feel like making connections with someone new or a new group of people Maybe the circle that you're with right now is why you're feeling like this Knight of Wands reversed. Maybe that's why this tower moment needs to happen. And that's going to lead you to this Ace of Cups, this new stirring of emotion. What courageous action do I need to take to achieve my goals? Five of Swords. I feel like there, this, is a, this is a conflict card for me. I don't know if you need to say sorry. I don't know which person you are in the card, but there's, there's one victor and there's one person who's left holding his head, feeling just defeated and um, not feeling so good. This card may be suggesting that maybe you need to walk away from somebody from this area of conflict. Maybe this is the tower. Maybe this is the tower situation. Maybe you need to end this relationship with the person. Um, and that's going to be the tower moment. Cause like when something is removed from your life, it creates kind of like an, like an energetic vacuum where something new is able to be sucked into and to fill that space and maybe that's where this ace of cups is going to come into play. How can I handle conflict effectively? Three of cups. I'm wondering, I, I'm really thinking that this is, this reading has to do with relationships with other people. It could be romantic or it could be just a situation that you're in. But I feel like this, this three of cups, this could either be hanging out with people who support you, who make you feel heard and loved, or I'm, I'm, I've never gotten this feeling before, but in this instance, I kind of feel like it's a mediator. I feel like it's somebody who you can trust who's going to bring peace between the two parties. Um, I'm really feeling strongly that it's like a mediator. I don't know if that's a trusted friend, a family member, a counselor, a therapist, but um, I feel like it's talking to somebody who you can trust. What is my highest intention for my personal power? The Knight of Cups reversed. My highest intention for my personal power. 
To me, this is like a romance card. This is a messenger card. Um, being reversed. I'm thinking this could be like, to me, I'm thinking this is ending a bad relationship. Like a breakup, um, breaking something off. Strongly getting that this reading is about a relationship. And it's really strange because it's a collective reading. Maybe this could be um, not becoming so overly attached. Maybe this could be slowing down. This could be um, not investing so much of yourself emotionally in a new relationship. But I really feel strongly that for some of you, this may be leaving a situation that is not good for you. What would I do if I knew I would succeed? Two of Swords. To me, this is like the elephant in the room card. And, and that's on this deck. Um, on this deck, it, it makes me think like you're, you have put this blindfold on and you're refusing to look at the elephant in the room. Like, you know that there's a problem and you're just putting your blinders on, refusing to see, pretending it's not there. And these crows, like these are, these are your, your spirit guides. These are your animal friends, your helpers. And they are literally trying to remove this thing from your eyes and they're like unraveling it one thread at a time and they're really struggling to get it off and you're fighting them like no leave it alone leave it there I don't want to look at that but I feel like if you knew that you would succeed that you would take this blinder off your eyes and you would just face the elephant in the room and then going back to the second card where do I need to assert myself to feel emotionally secure so I don't know. Um, I, I, I really, I, I really am having a hard time saying that this is purely about a romantic situation, especially on a collect, like on a collective reading. I, I just, that's really um, difficult for me to, to believe. So I'm thinking that it's, it, it may be a relationship with a person and it doesn't have to be, it doesn't have to be romantic. I'm thinking it could be just something that's very emotionally charged. That could be with your children. That could be with your spouse. That could be a parent. That could be a friend, a coworker, whatever. Um, but I'm thinking that there's a relationship with another person. I'm I'm not really feeling that it's with a large group of people. I'm I'm think, thinking that this is um, a very specific relationship with the person that is not serving your highest good and that it's causing you a lot of stress. That you do need to talk to a third party, a mediator type person. Maybe that is, um, that could be human resources. That could be, that could be a counselor or whatever, um, whatever it is. And that this, that this situation will not improve until these blinders come off, until you have your tower moment, whether that is, you know, I really don't know what your tower moment is or wh where your tower, where your tower is uh, located, <laughs> whether that is in a home or at a place of employment, but I feel like your highest intention for your personal power is calling it quits, walking away from a situation. Yeah. And that you would pull your blinders off if you knew you would succeed. Wow. That's heavy. But Aries energy is all about charging forward, um, not being afraid to take action. Aries are very confident. And I think that this is the time to harness that energy. So pile three, I hope you enjoyed your reading. If this makes sense to you, um, please feel free to comment below. And if you enjoyed your reading, don't forget to like and subscribe. Thank you. Bye.